Hey everyone, I've got a hopefully pretty helpful video to share with you today. I'm gonna to be talking about all the different tips that I have for you on how to get faster internet and overall have a better Wi-Fi connection in your home. So if you guys are struggling with slow internet speeds or if you just wanna have a little bit better connection for things like online gaming, movie streaming, basic internet usage, and smart home devices, hopefully some of the tips in this video will help you guys out. So the first tip I have to share with you guys today is a simple one that's just to decrease the number of devices on your network. So if you're like everybody else, you probably have dozens of things in your house that connected to the Wi-Fi at some point. Some things might not really be used so much anymore. So a basic tip is to just go to that device and simply disconnect it from the Wi-Fi to allow more bandwidth for the higher priority devices that you actually use on your network. Okay, so tip number two is to use your dual band Wi-Fi capabilities. Most of the Wi-Fi routers today are dual band, meaning they have two bandwidths that you can use. One is known as the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth and the other one is the five gigahertz. When you go to connect to Wi-Fi, you'll usually see your Wi-Fi network's name and you'll see two options and one will have the 5GHZ at the end. It stands for five gigahertz. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is divide your devices into those two different bandwidths. For the 2.4 gigahertz, you're gonna wanna put your lesser priority devices on there that don't necessarily need that great of an internet connection to function properly. And other things you wanna to connect to 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth is things that are farther away from your Wi-Fi router because the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth has further range but slower speeds. And the five gigahertz bandwidth has less range but better speeds and better connection. Things that are somewhat close to your router that are high priority, like gaming consoles, computers, and even phones, you'll wanna connect them to the five gigahertz channel instead of the 2.4. Okay, so the third tip I have for you is to use an ethernet connection if you have to. This is also known as hardwiring your device into your Wi-Fi router using an ethernet cable. Basically what you're doing is connecting an ethernet cable from one of the usually four ports on the back of your Wi-Fi router and you're connecting the cable directly to the device so that the device doesn't have to use the wireless signal to get an internet connection. It'll get an internet connection straight through the cable and that allows for faster speeds and less latency and see so you're gonna to wanna to use this tip for things like your desktop computers or streaming devices that don't really have to be moved that often and are close enough to your router that you can have a long enough cable to hook them up. On the subject of ethernet cables, it brings me to my next tip, tip number four, and that is to know the type of ethernet cable that you have. So if you look along the cable, there's usually some text printed on it that will say, cat5, cat6, and sometimes even cat7. The better category cable you have, the higher speed it's capable of. So just look along your ethernet cables, and if you have a cat5, maybe you should consider upgrading to at least a cat6. They're pretty cheap. I'll link some below to Amazon if you're thinking of getting one. Basically, there's an ethernet connection from your modem to your Wi-Fi router. That's a pretty high priority one that you might wanna upgrade. And then of course, if you're using any device hardwired to your router, that'll be a separate cable as well. So tip number five is to know whether your Wi-Fi router is any good. If you go over to your Wi-Fi router and you look on the bottom or on the sides for the little sticker with all the information on it, look for the letters N or AC and usually they'll be followed by a number. So for example N600 or AC1200 or even G. If you have a Wi-Fi router that is the G technology, you probably are gonna have major connection issues with that, so definitely recommend upgrading. If you have a Wi-Fi router that says N, which are actually pretty common today, but they're getting pretty old and they can't really handle that many devices, so the next step above that would be AC. That is pretty much the norm today. My Wi-Fi router is AC and it's capable of connecting a whole bunch of things. I have a bunch of smart home stuff, streaming devices, computers hooked up to it no problem they all connect really well I also wanted to teach you the number that comes after those letters so for example the AC 1200 that number is the amount of megabits per second that it's capable of at one given time so the higher that number the better so I'll leave a bunch of links to different routers that I recommend below as well if you're looking to get some more information on a router upgrade 
Okay, that brings me to tip number six, and that is to upgrade your modem. So the modem is the little box that's provided usually by your internet service provider, and that is the thing that is giving you the internet connection in general and it's usually what you plug into a Wi-Fi router to then make the signal wireless. Some modems are also a Wi-Fi router, so they're a two-in-one, and if you have one of those, it's probably not that great, and you could always hook a Wi-Fi router into that to get a better signal. If you have a really old modem from your cable provider, you can possibly call them up and see if there's an upgrade available and to see if they'll send it out to you for free maybe since you're a customer of theirs. Or you can go out to the store and get a new version. Chances are you won't need to upgrade your modem, but for some people out there, if you do have an old modem, consider upgrading it. And that brings me to tip number seven, is know the difference between a DSL modem and a cable modem. So if you have a DSL modem, it's going to have a phone jack that looks like a smaller Ethernet jack, and that's where you're going to be getting your internet from. But that's pretty old technology, and it's not capable of a very good internet speed. If you do have DSL internet from your provider, you might want to consider looking around for a different provider in your area that will cover you but provides a cable modem instead of a DSL modem. So go over to your modem. If it has the little screw on black cable, that's a cable modem and you should be good to go. If it has the phone jack, consider switching internet providers to a cable company. Okay, so tip number eight is simply just upgrade your internet package through your provider. Now this is going to make a world of difference, obviously, because the internet provider that you have is setting restrictions specifically for you depending on which internet package you buy from them. You're never going to be able to get speeds better than what they're giving you. If that's the only thing holding you back and that's the only thing making your Wi-Fi speeds not ideal, then you might have to consider looking at the prices for some of their better packages with better internet speed. One thing I want to mention is most internet providers will list their internet speeds by megabits per second and not megabytes per second. Right now I have a 100 megabit download speed from my provider and that equates to about 12 megabytes per second. So don't get confused and expect 100 megabytes per second download when you see a 100 megabit internet service package. Just want to make sure you're aware of that so when you're looking at the packages that they sell take about 10 to 12 percent of that megabit number and that's going to be your actual megabytes per second download speeds that you get. Okay, tip number nine is going to be your Wi-Fi router location. If it's jammed in a corner somewhere, your Wi-Fi signal might suffer and the range won't be as far as it could be. Now, this tip is mostly for people with bigger homes. Let's say you live in a three-story house and the Wi-Fi router is in the basement in the corner somewhere and your bedroom's upstairs, you probably don't have that great of a connection. So you could either A, move the Wi-Fi router to a better spot, or B, get something called a Wi-Fi range extender. And they're these little plugs that you can just plug into a regular outlet. It picks up your Wi-Fi signal and then bounces it further to allow the Wi-Fi signal to go further and you can overall have better range. Okay, so my 10th tip for you is to consider switching to a cellular network with unlimited data and a mobile hotspot rather than an internet provider. So in some cases, if you can't get a good internet service provider in your house, but you can get cell phone signal, and you're gonna need good cell phone signal. So if you get good cell phone signal in your house, you can get a little Wi-Fi hotspot that's capable of having a SIM card in it and then you'll just have to pay the cell phone company monthly for whatever their best unlimited plan is and you can connect devices to that little Wi-Fi router with the SIM card in it and you might end up with faster and better speeds than the internet service provider in your area. So a little bonus tip for you guys is to just reset your Wi-Fi router occasionally. If you haven't done that in a while, go unplug the router, plug it back in, or click the reset button on it, and that could solve a couple minor issues that you might have with your connection. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. That's all I could think of. If I think of some other tips for you, I'll try to comment them below. And if you think of anything, comment them below for all of us to read. Um, check the description for some helpful links. I'll include an internet speed testing website site that you can use but anyway thank you guys for watching leave a thumbs up if you learned anything subscribe if you're not already and i will see you guys next time